Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily serve your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
All right, I invite all the kids to come up front, young and or young at heart. Going to make a circle, going to have a, a little message for the kids and the adults. There's always something to learn. Come on up, come on up. And after the children's sermon, y'all can either go back to sit down with your parents or you can come do art in the parish hall with me and then we'll bring you back in for communion. Welcome, come on up, join the circle. Here's a spot for you. Oh, we got more. How about folks in the back of the circle? We're going to keep on making this circle bigger. Welcome. Scooch in, scooch in. We got lots of room. Abby, might might even have to make to two Abby? rows. All right, is that everybody? One more, are they coming down? Hi, you coming to join us? We got lots of fun this morning. Lots of fun things to do. Happy Easter, everybody. I have a story for you all this morning. After the service, we're going to have our Easter egg hunt. We're going to have lots of fun things to do. We're going to have some sidewalk chalk and bubbles and lots of candy. Like, lots of candy. I promise. Lots. More, 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 more than I am legally allowed to send you home with. Like a million, yeah. All right, so we're going to be doing Easter eggs. I have a story for you. What's this? It's an egg. It's an egg. It's a real egg. I won't drop it, I promise. And so lots of people die Easter eggs, but we forget why we, why we die Easter eggs. Does anybody know? What do you think? You forget. What do you think, Nikki? Because they're boring. No, that, that is a good thought. We can take a blank canvas of an egg and paint anything we want onto it. And that's super exciting. Egg shouldn't be what? Boring? Well, whenever you find the chicken that lays the, the blue eggs and the green eggs and the purple eggs, let me know, and uh, I'll, see, I'll see if we can get those eggs on the shelves, make, make a buck or two. Oh, that would be a chicken of a different color. Now, the story of the, the, the Easter eggs begins a long, long time ago. No, much longer ago than 1889. This is like 2,000 years ago. No, not quite that long ago. Just 2,000 years ago. And there was an old man who lived at the edge of the city of Jerusalem. And he had cows to give the milk and gardens to give all sorts of vegetables and trees to give figs and apples and other stuff and chickens to lay the eggs. And every morning he would go to the chickens and he would say, hi, can I have some of your eggs? And they would give him lots of eggs, sometimes more than he could eat. And we're not taking questions right now. <laughs> and so sometimes they were more than he could eat. And so he would put them in a basket and take them to the market to sell so that somebody else could have eggs. He would take all of the eggs and he would put them in a basket under a white cloth And he would take the basket to the market. And one day, he went into town and there was something strange. There was a crowd and they were strangely silent. 
and he pushed his way to the front with his eggs. And he, and, and he, when he pushed his way to the front, he saw there were some criminals. They were carrying crosses. The Romans were forcing them to carry them to be crucified. And they were beaten, and they weren't looking good. And he watched, and all of a sudden, one of the men carrying the cross tripped, and the cross fell, and just instinctively he reached out and caught it. The Romans forced him to help the man carry the cross all the way outside the city. And the man stayed there, and he watched. Even as the sky grew dark, and it rained, he watched as the Mother Mary saw Jesus in his suffering and his passion. And then the people took Jesus away to the grave to be buried. And then the man remembered, oh, I forgot my eggs. He went back to the place where he had first ca caught the cross and they were there. Well, the basket was. He thought somebody had probably taken everything inside. But he looked beneath the cloth. You know what he found? The eggs were all there, like gems, with designs and colors. all different colors. Would you help me show this off to everybody? Go to the folks in the congregation and the folks here. You can stand up and kind of show it around a little bit. All sorts of lines and designs and colors. The eggs were showing in their designs and lines and colors everything that had happened that day. Here, can you see it now? Yeah, they do look similar, but in different colors. Aren't they pretty? And that's the story of why we dye Easter eggs. Well, I, I, I think the idea of the story is it might just be a miracle, but we'll save that for another day. It is about eggs. And so now we are going to go dye eggs and make them a little bit less boring. Um, anybody who wants to go sit with your family, you are more than welcome to sit with your family through this part of the service. Anybody who wants to follow me, we will come back for communion. The lesson is from Acts. Peter began to speak. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses. 
and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
Let us pray. May God's word be spoken, and may God's word be heard. Amen. Please be seated. Nineteen fifty-three, Le Mans, France, the oldest active endurance motorsport racing event in the world, won by the car that can cover the greatest amount of distance in twenty-four hours, not the car that finishes the course in the least amount of time. Ferrari is heavily favored to win. Their driver, one of their drivers, Albert Ascari is already a world champion. The Jaguar is thought to be Ferrari's biggest threat. That is, until Jaguar is disqualified the day before on a technicality. The drivers, the entire team, the Jaguar team is devastated. They're distraught. The dream is over, gone, dead. The year is 33-ish. Jerusalem, the Sunday after Jesus' crucifixion. Devastated and distraught, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome are walking to Jesus' tomb to anoint his dead body. On the way, they're discussing if they're even going to be able to get in there because there's this huge stone across the front of it. The dreams they had for Jesus to be the one to save them for Jesus as Messiah are gone, over, done, dead. When the women get to the tomb, that stone that they were so worried about, the stone is rolled away, as the junior choir sang for us, which is weird, and there is a stranger there, and that alarms them. And this person is generally thought to be an angel, and the angel says, don't be alarmed, you're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. So he's like establishing, yes, we are in fact talking about the same person. The angel continues, but he's been raised. See for yourself, go tell the disciples, even Peter, that Jesus said he will meet you in Galilee, like he said he would. So Mary, Mary, and Salome, they ask no questions. Depending on which translation you read, they are terrified, trembling, bewildered, stunned, and they flee in terror. And the oldest text that we have from Mark, the oldest gospel that we have, says, and they told no one. Now, Jesus had told his followers about his own death and resurrection in this book. He gets really specific, too, you know, he says, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. I'm going to be turned over to the religious authorities and the governmental authorities. And I'm going to be flogged and mocked and spat upon, and I'm going to die. So it's like the um, task list that type E A's just dream about. It's like, check, 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 check. So it seems like it could maybe follow the last prediction that Jesus would be raised from the dead after three days might have been at least like rattling around in their brain somewhere. And yet the women are at the tomb to take care of Jesus' dead body, not to see if he's raised from the dead. And let's not get started on Jesus' male disciples. I mean, where are they? They're nowhere to be found. They are still hiding. They abandoned Jesus even faster than they decided to follow him in the first place. <laughs> now, Jesus' first followers are not bad people. They're just people. We now know that the human brain evolved to help us quickly, unconsciously categorize so that we can deal with the ridiculous amount of information that we come across each and every day. Now, maybe they didn't have quite as much information to process 2,000 years ago, but even so, even then, when the human brain does not quite know what to make of something, we often ignore it. The human brain becomes the best Teflon in the world when faced with something that has no category. Whatever it is, just is prone to slide right off. So I'm guessing the disciples could not process what is happening. Their brain just discards it. Ours probably would too. So God knew 
Christ knew that it could not just be up to humans. It could not be up just to the people involved. And Mark, if they were the only people that this was counting on, if the Easter story was resting with the people, this story remains untold. The story dies with Jesus. But we're here today, right? So some, so something happened. We are here wanting to believe or believing that death and fear don't win, that hope will be triumphant, and that love will be undimmed. Mark paints this very clear picture that it is not all up to the disciples. It's not all up to the disciples. So back in 1953, back in Le Mans, the Jaguar gets reinstated, and the Jaguar wins. In fact, the Jaguar sets multiple records it's not just up to the drivers, who are not as prepared as they could have been, so they thought they were disqualified, so they had a night, if you know what I mean. <laughs> it wasn't just up to the mechanics, who are indeed key during the pit stops. It's also not about how fast the Jaguar can go. There are other cars that are faster. The Le Mans is not a straight road, it's full of twists and turns, so while everyone else was obsessed with making their car go faster, the engineers at Jaguar concentrated on how best to move slower. This dramatically cut down on the abrupt braking and quick acceleration, meaning that the Jaguar required less maintenance that day. In other words, something, namely, the newly invented disc brakes that cannot be seen unless you know where to look, designed and made by people who may have been nowhere near the track that day, are critical to the win. The world's a tough place to be right now. There's a lot that is wrong. I don't have to tell you what it is. You already know it's in our pockets all the time. Discouragement and cynicism are understandable particularly when there are parts of the dominant culture in the United States that have idolized, idolized self-reliance, independence, and individual achievement to a fault. So much so that we think it's all up to us, that we can save ourselves, and that if nothing else, we will close ranks around our families and save them. Now, Instead of self-reliance, independence, and individual achievement being empowering, allowing us to tackle our own problems, the world problems, just problems in general, we are overwhelmed, paralyzed, despondent. But if it wasn't all up to the disciples, what if it's all not up to us either? Life, though perhaps less impressive than the Lemen, is often more challenging than any sport competition in many ways because of how long it goes on. And fortunately, God has gifted us with other people, with a community of faithful people to support one another with what we're going through. The Le Mans drivers are not even allowed to drive alone. They tried it. They thought maybe we can save some time by not having to switch drivers out, and they stopped because it was too dangerous. Now there have to be three drivers. Our own independent belief in God is likely not going to be enough on its own. A family or a household alone also can't cut it. And I say that because so often something devastating happens within our family, so much so that we need, yes, need, someone outside of our family, outside of our tight inner circle, whatever that happens to be, to help. God gifts us with community to help us hope when we can't hope ourselves. And I hesitated to say this because it seems really self-serving, but I'd pick saying something self-serving any day of the week because I don't want to tell you what I believe to be half-truths. It's not just up to us. A funny thing can happen when we at least try to act or believe it's not just up to us, things become easier. Not, not easy, mind you. But somehow, some
somewhat, just, just a little bit less hard, slightly more doable. Believing God is at work in the world helps because we know our efforts are not fruitless. So just keep doing your thing. Doing your thing in the corner of the world or encouraging others to do their thing. It's kind of like exercise. It makes zero sense that expending energy leads to more energy. What kind of math is that? I don't get it. But it does, right? So what do you think, y'all? What if we walked out of those doors today daring to at least try to hope that God is still at work in the world? What kind of weight would be lifted if it wasn't all up to you? If it wasn't all up to us? If it's not all up to us, perhaps it's easier to imagine that some issues may be approached from angles we haven't thought of yet. Maybe the car needs to go slower, not speed up faster. What becomes possible in our own life and in the world if it's not up to us the horizon of hope stretches further than we generally allow it to. On your way out today, I invite you to pick up a sticker. Um, it says, Dare to Hope, and it really is a sticker. It's hard to peel off the back, but I tried it. It does work. And it says, Dare to Hope, okay? So put this somewhere where you can see it. And it can be a reminder. It can be aspirational. It can be a prayer. It can be a mantra. It can be some combination thereof. Dare to hope. It is not just up to you. Amen. I invite you to rise and body your spirit. We're continuing with the renewal of baptismal vows on page seven. Through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that the Lenten observance is ended to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism, by which we once renounce Satan and all his works and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to the of the living and dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread, and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor? As yourself. I will, will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I, I will, will with God's, God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for the prayers of the people.
God of love, we rejoice with angels and all the host of heaven as we celebrate the resurrection of your son. Bless today's joyful celebration and turn our hearts to you with new delight and commitment. We praise you, Almighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. God of mercy, bring your church to new life. Awaken in us a faithfulness that manifests itself in joy, in dedication to work of reconciliation in the world, in care for your creation, and in awe of your glory. We praise you, Almighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. God of wholeness, bring those who suffer to new life. We pray for those who bear the burden of pain and anxiety, whose relationships are scattered, shattered, whose lives are full of despair. We pray for Lisa, Tommy, Bobby, Nancy T, Hillary C, Diane L, Alan and Penny, Keith, Scott M, Bill O, Susan G, Christine A, Kathy, Ronnie, Jaeger, Francis, Pat, Toby, Sue, Bill, Christina, Nicholas, Walter, Sonia, Betty, Linda M, Timmy M, and Jerry B. We praise you, almighty God. Alleluia, amen. God of light, bring those in authority to new life in the ways they lead their nations. Show them the path of integrity and truth, that their people may live in peace, that all may have plenty. We particularly cry out to you in the midst of the pain, trauma, violence, and fear prevailing in Ukraine and the Holy Land. Be with those who need you. We pray for all people, Jews, Muslims, and Christians, for soldiers serving in harm's way and for innocent bystanders. We pray for the establishment of peace and also call for you to bring justice and equity to the peoples. Lead us to find ways to be present with them and reflect your love for them. We praise you, Almighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. God of eternity, we give thanks for those who have gone before us and have entered into new and everlasting life in your presence. We praise you, Almighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by a fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I invite you to be seated if you're not already, if you already are, of course that is fine. 
I know many of you, but if we haven't had the chance to meet yet, I'm Anne, and on behalf of the vestry, I'm thrilled, thrilled to welcome you here on this Easter Sunday. St. Mary's is a multi-generational community dedicated to the Christian vision of a more just, caring, inclusive, and loving world. And if you want to know more about us, the most up-to-date information is in two places, social media, namely Instagram and Facebook, or on our weekly e-newsletter, which you can sign up for through the website. Okay. Today, the Easter egg hunt is after the service, which Andrew mentioned in the cemetery, which is this way. Grown-ups, help us wait for the kids for the signal. It's hard, right? It's hard to wait. The children under five get to go first. Children six and up, don't worry, we're not gonna leave you hanging. We have bubbles, we have sidewalk chalk to keep you at least a little bit distracted until it's your turn. Grown-ups and children, if you are opening eggs and don't see anything that you could have due to allergies, please see Andrew, okay, who was giving the children's sermon for our reserve special, reserve stash. <laughs> Coffee hour is outside today. There's cake, there's cheese and crackers, there's veggies and more. And don't forget your sticker. I'll have some and I'll put some on the coffee um, hour table as well. Again, outside today, please tell an usher if you would like us to bring communion to you in the pew. If you can't make it up here, that's fine. I would be happy to bring it to you in the pew if that would be helpful to you. Um, lots of people make days like this possible. I'm just gonna um, say thank you out loud to two groups in particular. Thank you to Maureen Kelly and her daughters, Harper and Adair, for helping the Easter Bunny with the egg hunt this year. Yay, thank you. And also thank you to the Altar Guild. They are the people, like, not on the racetrack that you don't see that are critical to the win. A special thanks to Catherine Catchpole and Amanda Yeo, right in the back there. Uh, we are so thankful for all of your leadership. Thank you for being here today. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Turn your children. They are very excited with their eggs. They, they are coming back for communion. Okay? So don't worry. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Give it to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, holy one of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so, as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings in all creation as we sing with joy. are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You call the people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin brought us into new life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he gave thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ, coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made. We proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine. 
that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ. And in the fullness of time, gather us with blessed Mary and all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Amen. Let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. of St. Mary's, whether it's your first time here, you've been going here your whole life, visitors, beloveds, all, this is God's table. You are welcome.
love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.